we have been more focused on uh, trying to create a sustainable gaming industry in, in the continent and been uh, cultivating the gaming industry, cultivating game developers. Everything uh, pertaining to us, to our history, to, to our ancestors, to our culture, have been demonized. is Johanna aka Jojo. I'm super excited today because I've got Dawit Abraham. Dawit is the founder and CEO of Kine Games located in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Dawit, welcome. Thank you Jojo. I'm really glad to be here. Sure. Thank you. You are one of the persons that I know that have been able to generate revenue, profitable, yeah, <laughs> profitable with the game development uh, very early on in Africa. So I would be, I would like to understand your journey and how you got to create Kenny Games and uh, your, your personal journey and, and the journey of the, the Kenny Games. Can you, can you do that for us? All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for having me here. Mm -hmm. uh, my, I, I, so a huge correction there is that we are, our company is still a pre-revenue company. We're not profitable yet. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely going to take uh, some, some challenges, some overcoming some challenges for like any gaming company in Africa to be, to be profitable. Okay. Uh, but we have had some, some financial success, I, I, I would say. Yes, I, guess. I would uh, say. And, I was talking about those financial success, Johanna. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those financial success. Yes, yes. So we, we've been able to raise funding, for example, uh, two times so far, and, and we've been able to actually validate some uh, monetization techniques, and, and mm. we've, we've been able to gather uh, good paying customers. So, well, I guess, uh, let me start by introducing the company, sure. uh, Gnei Games. So yeah, as you said, it's based in Ethiopia. I am the co-founder, along with my co-founder Samuel Sisai. And we are the first gaming company in Ethiopia. We started uh, in 20, 2017 uh, by launching our first game, Kukudu, which is a 3D mobile runner game. Uh, and it went on to win the Apps Africa 2018 award, which was good. Uh, and, and later on, we, we've built the most recent game, which, which I think many, many people have uh, heard of, which is Gabetta, which is a Mancala game, which also won the 2020 uh, Best App of Africa Award. And, and we've been uh, cultivating the gaming industry, cultivating game developers, uh, which you know, almost none existed like four or five years ago in, in Ethiopia. And we've also been trying to be, uh, you know, uh, in, in the forefront of the, the gaming industry in Africa. So that's a very short description of our company and who we sure. are. And but who is that with Abraham? Tell, tell us about about yourself. All right. Uh, well, that's that's a very good question. <laughs> it's a difficult question to answer, but I can try. So, I am a software engineer by profession. Uh, I have worked on many software projects, uh, you know, many uh, fields in software engineering, including mobile dev, mobile engineering, artificial intelligence, like specifically machine learning. Uh, and then I got introduced into gaming and I've been a game developer for, for many years now. Uh, I've been a teacher. Uh, I am a public speaker. I write sometimes. I, I love learning languages. I, I'm a black belt martial arts taekwondo. Oh, wow. So I, nice. <laughs> I do a I lot do power of things. <laughs> I do powerlifting, so that means something. Oh, I yeah. Mean, that's do like... some sports, <laughs> where the combat sport. I like strong sports. Yes, that means something. <laughs> definitely. That, that, that's definitely the same. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I guess that is that is a bit of who I am. Recently, I've been more focused on uh, trying to create a sustainable gaming industry in, in the continent. And by sustainable, I mean uh, there being game developers can actually build African games and, and launch them and make them available for sale and be able to monetize off them so that they can actually have a sustainable business in, in the continent. And, and that's something that, been, that I've been focused on uh, mm -hmm. for the past four years. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this, in this process, we've come, we've come a long way, but 
Uh, I've transitioned mostly from being a software developer, the lead software developer, towards being the CEO, towards being, uh, well, all of those things, I guess, that you, you transition throughout your career. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the basics of, of who Dawit is. Okay, that's great. So why gaming? How come gaming? Why gaming? So initially because, uh, well, I mean, as a software engineer, gaming is kind of very interesting. It's mm -hmm. challenging. It's very, uh, I mean, it's one of those places where uh, you get to be creative, you get to, to solve many problems. It's not very repetitive. It's one of the most interesting fields mm -hmm. as, that, that you can actually get into as a software engineer. Uh, but once I got in, uh, I guess the more interesting question is why I stayed in gaming. Uh, and, and, and you don't really, because once you start facing the challenges and, and you know, as fun as creating games is with the business starts to kind of suffer and you're really not making a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. The reason I stayed uh, despite all of that is, is gaming is kind of, so it is one of the most advanced forms of art. And art is uh, the, the, the dominant way that you can actually represent a society culture uh, or you can even say an identity right and and Africa the first time I built a game and went touring across Europe uh, Asia uh, one of the most uh, like well I mean funny questions that I just get asked is do people in Africa play games uh, do I mean this is this is the continent that created games, right? I mean, the oldest board, board games are African. And, and a lot of people were asking that question. I was like, what do you think we do here? And, and there are so many uh, mis misconceptions about generally the African the African continent. And, and this is in many things. Like yeah. uh, when, when, you, when you're a talent from Africa, people start to question, do, do Africans code and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. This is something that's been, uh, you know, kind of, um, a pain point for me personally mm -hmm. because I, I was born and grew up in, in Ethiopia and mm -hmm. I feel like uh, whenever I, I try to actually go ahead and, and look at opportunities elsewhere it is a bit difficult for you to prove that you are you know, as good a software engineer as anyone else in the world mm -hmm. without without you know like the, those biases and when for me if, if you look at it it's it's also something that exists within Africa as well when, when we actually see uh, Africans and we actually want them to provide a service and it's like you have this expectation uh, mm -hmm. which all, all of that I believe this is my personal opinion is tied to to how we've been presenting ourselves uh, mm -hmm. to to others and most importantly to us how how have we been uh, showing Africans to Africa and for for like uh, a long time, uh, this is pre-colonial Africa. Uh, Africa used to be so vibrant in arts, culture, uh, techno even technology, uh, medicine, exactly. everything. And mm -hmm. and and after after the, the colonial era, we've we've gone back uh, so far down to a point where. We can't actually uh, remember the last time uh, Africa was prosperous or great or a lot of things. And, and all we see right now is this kind of mis, uh, misunderstood Africa, which where people believe something which is not reality. I mean, there's all the bad things, of course, but there are so many good things that are not being projected. And, and the only way to do that, the most important way, not the only way, the most impactful way to do that is art. Art is what shows people who we are and mm -hmm. art is also what shows us who we are and mm -hmm. that is that is one of the main reasons where i said okay you know what if, if we're gonna change this we have to change how we we show people who we are and the best way to to change that is art mm -hmm. and the most the most uh well the, the most i can do in art is gaming so that's that's why i stayed in gaming yeah that's a long answer i guess <laughs> no but that's the best interesting answer Forever, like as you can <laughs> see, I'm very Afrocentric and, and <laughs> understand. I am very interested in the history of Africa. Um, uh, and I, I went back far, far back. Uh, and uh, when I go to, to any country in Africa, I like to go back to the not the touristic part of, of uh, where you, you want to go, but really go to see the, the people that can trans, 
uh, convey what was happening. So uh, let me give you an example. I went to Nigeria in 2019, I think. Yeah, 2019. And I wanted to go to the Yoruba land. And when I got there, I, did, I could not be bothered. I was listening to my spirit. However, I was able to uh, met someone who gave me the opportunity to go. When I just said, yeah, I want to go to a village, he said, yeah, let's go to Arochuku. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to. I knew better the, the Yoruba um, ancestors and the, the, the religion and better than the Igbo one, to be fully honest with you. But this is what I was provided as an opportunity by the ancestors. So I told myself, I'll go. Uh, on the road, I was sharing on my social media. A lot of people were, they were like scared. And I said, I asked my friend, I said, why people are scared and going to tell me that I'm going to be eaten? That uh, Ibo, they are cannibals. <laughs> so the guy say, Jojo, you're very smart. I know you. You're very smart. Take your laptop when we get to the hotel and look at our and do your do your research as you, you want to do. So I went. I, when we got to the hotel, I I checked and that was fascinating. That was so fascinating. And his friend that was coming to to see us um, was actually the the current king of the Arochuku tribe. You see what the, the, the people there. Uh, that is interesting. So the thing is that I read everything that I could and then I asked him questions and I said, you know that, that's why people are looking at me like that because they are very fair, they've got very green eyes or or as in not eyes like me, you know? And I, and I saw that we there are some words that, we, that are the same in Creole, you know? And uh, and I read that <laughs> before to, <clears throat> I read that I actually the Igbo started the the slave trade with uh, the British. Oh, I see. So the British or the, the the European that came. I, I'm not sure it was the British. I think it was some some someone else. No, it wasn't the British. It, it was a, a, another another European country. Anyway. After we went to, to the shrine, well, they told me all the American, even the American ambassador, she came there, it's it's protected, blah, 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 blah. But the thing is that you have to cross some river, you have to go in the jungle, like that. Like in the bush, it's in the bush. <laughs> so I went, I went. I see. I went that there. interesting. I did yeah. the, like, there was a, a doctor, he was uh, um, drinking some uh, fermented um, pan ah, wine. Yeah. I see. And with cola. And he told me, I went into the shrine. I, I think the ancestor I came back. And I was. That is interesting. I was uh, barefoot in the jungle. <laughs> they, they told me, Are you sure you've never been here? Yeah. So maybe my ancestors are, are from there. <laughs> you know? That was funny. That is, that is very fascinating. That is very fascinating. Yeah. And there are so many similar stories, you know, across the continent where you actually, you know, like meet this types, this types of like interesting people who have been uh, able to preserve a lot of their culture, preserve yeah. a lot of their identity as well. Yeah. Really but the good. things <laughs> to, to, to come back on what you were saying here is yeah. that people from the same, same village, same village, huh? mm. that's me why I went. Why did I go? And then I stayed for two hours with the the elders and they explain to me, you know, the convey the, the history, the expect. Yeah. So we I came with a bottle of Ito, I came with Cola to say thank you. And for then they started two hours and a half, they talked. <laughs> oh I mean, they have they have history that's thousands of years old too. <laughs> Oh yeah. my God, that yeah. was that was that. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. but the, the thing is that what really, re, what what was really surprising for me is that people from the area itself was scared to go because our 
uh, history, our gods, our sisters, our tradition have been demonized. You see what I mean? So to, to come yeah. back to, you say, we don't even remember when Africa was prosper. You see what I mean? Everything per, uh, pertaining to us, to our history, to, to our ancestors, to our culture, have been demonized. Yeah, that is true. So is even our own people who are there, they're going to be scared. They've been told to be scared <laughs> of themselves. So to that's, come back, yeah. That, that's going to have a huge, uh, even economical impact on these types of societies because, you know, in, in one way you are happy that these people were able to preserve everything. They have like their part, their, their culture, the, the fact that they are, they've been cut off from the rest of the world has its advantages when it comes to preserving, you know, their identity, which is kind of important. But then there is the economical impact that you have because when you're cut off, you are going to not be able to move uh, as, as fast as everyone else. And that, that creates this gap, which, which kind of, you know, like could could have been avoided. Uh, they, they could have had, you know, their, their culture and still been able to actually move in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that, that, so coming from Ethiopia, one of the things that I guess we're very lucky to have here is that not having been colonized, uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, when when you come here, it's everything is so different. So, for example, yeah. it's 2013 Ethiopia. If I go to a bank, I put in 2013. I don't put 2021. I mean, I can, but if I write <laughs> it in Amharic, I have to put in 2013. That's because we've been using this calendar that we've used we've used for thousands of years. And that's something that's never changed because no one came and changed it. Uh, you have the language, the scripted languages that, that many people use here. And uh, the culture generally, the uh, a lot of a lot of the culture has been preserved, which kind of makes you feel uh, a certain way about it. And, and it's, um, I mean, Ethiopia is now one of the, you know, prosperous nations in the world. And there's so many to say about that, but the, the fact that that identity and that culture was preserved gives you these strings and confidence when it comes to, to you know, feeling like, okay, I am actually, uh, I'm happy, I am, was, was who I am, I'm happy with my history. Therefore, I'm going to try, I'm not going to try to escape from it. I'm not going to run away and go somewhere like, you know, some, some Western country and try to create you know, a new identity, and then maybe perhaps then I could prosper. I'm, I'm okay being who I am here. And, and not that there are like, um, you know, uh, stories in Ethiopia as well, where some some cultures have been oppressed, but that, that's, you know, unfortunate to say, but uh, it's, it's also good to, to have this other cultures which, which, which have been around for, for a very long time. So that is one good thing that I, I think we have in Ethiopia. Yeah. And it's a good thing to, to use the culture that's, you know, existing because if you go to every African country, there is this thousand years old tale, myth, legend, game, uh, whatever that, that you can actually use to, to kind of like powerfully tell the, the story of that, that identity, that the tribe to, the, to those people themselves. And there will be people who don't know it themselves. For example, I can mention the new game that we built, for example, Gabeta. Uh, it's Mankala. Mankala is played all over the continent and even outside of Africa, plenty of places in Asia in, uh, uh, I, I think in the Middle East and stuff like that. So this is a thousand euro game. It's probably the first board game. There have been like excavations where they found this uh, set where, you know, like holes have been borrowed into the sand and stuff. And, and there were like these stones that they used to actually use to, to play the game. Now, this game is thousands of years old, but not many people have this like attachment to it. If you, if you talk to young kids in Ethiopia, for example, they've either heard about it somewhere, or they've seen something, but they don't know how to play it. They don't really know how to actually. And when we actually created this game, which is kind of a variant of that game. And we added so many beautiful things to it, so many things that would make kids this, from this day and age be interested in it. Like, you know, all those power-ups that you have in games, all this additional, I guess, uh, I don't know, pizzazz, I guess, that make, that make it more interesting. And now it's actually one of the most uh, interesting games played in, in, in our country, elsewhere as well. I mean, 
uh, we have really good metrics on, on that game uh, in Europe and uh, Asia and the United States, uh, North America, South America. And a lot of people actually enjoy and play that game. This makes it one of those stories that we can say, okay, yeah, so this game came from Africa. Yeah. Sure. It's a beautiful game. And Africans used to play this for thousands of years. Yeah. That's a powerful story, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so the games, games is taking this, the, 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 is superseded the, the, the tradition of telling things, of showing things in physically, but is now, is the support a mean to, to, to the tradition, to the continuity of the tradition uh, transmission, basically. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Wow. Yeah. So you are seeing that th this is exactly what what we are here for. Um, understanding why and how we can leverage games to the good of our people, to the good of the culture, um, and as well for the greater public, the global world to see because they, they're going to, and to understand as well. So there, there are several um, topics that, that, that uh, is touching. And so how many games can a games add so far develop? So, so far we have launched two games, uh, one Kulu and second being Gabeta. Um, we have built a third game, which we're planning to launch, a very small game. Uh, and we've also, uh, so we're, we're kind of focusing on this, we are a mobile gaming studio, so we focus on mobile games. And so far we've had a runner, now we have two puzzle games. Uh, we are going to try to diversify the games that we build. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're hoping to at least launch two more games by the, you know, by the end of 2022. Which, which would be uh, kind of interesting to see how, how it goes. But yeah, those are the games that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Thank you, thank you. So what are the challenges as a game developer in the game development studio in, in, in Ethiopia, in, in Africa? What are the main challenges? So early on, the biggest challenge that we faced was the fact that we couldn't monetize our games. Um, and this is something that's uh, kind of very outdated elsewhere. This is not a kind of challenge that you face. Um, so in Ethiopia, and I think 20 other countries in Africa, you don't have what is called a Google Merchant account, which mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is what enables you to sell games on the App Store and the, I mean the Play Store. And the same thing for uh, apps on iOS as well. So mm -hmm. as a game developer in Ethiopia, for example, still, I can't sell games while being based in Ethiopia. I have to base my company and have a bank account in a country that has a Google Merchant account, say, for, for example, Kenya. So this has been the major challenge in Ethiopia so far. Uh, it's taken us a lot of years to try to find other ways to, to actually make money from games because um, I mean, whatever like we're making, if you can't sell it, it's going to be the biggest obstacle for you to keep making more of it, right? It's, this is not just gaming, this is everything in the world. Mm -hmm. And being able to sell it is the biggest problem. So mm -hmm. we've, come, we've come up with solutions, um, solutions where people would be able to pay using airtime, uh, people would be able to pay now with actually recently integrated mobile money uh, but still, we, we have to distribute it outside of the Play Store uh, because, you know, the, the Play Store has policies that prevent you from, from doing this. So that is the biggest challenge. And this has led to the second challenge, which is the lack of talent. Mm -hmm. and, and this is because, you know, if, if you had an industry that was thriving, then you would definitely, most definitely have uh, talents who would choose to, to go into that industry as a secure choice. Mm -hmm. But five, four or five years ago when we started, uh, we couldn't find, there, there was almost no game developer. Mm -hmm. There were people who used to do it as a hobby, you know, out of like uh, love for, for what they do. But there was nowhere you can go and say, okay, uh, I want a game developer I, I, and I would like to find one. So where, where would you go if the industry doesn't exist? So that was the second most biggest challenge we faced, which, which kind of traces back to the first one, because if there was a way to sell games, then 
some people would make it out and then become a successful gaming company, which would attract talents and, and software engineers to get into that field and become game developers themselves. So being the first gaming company in the country, that's the, the, the second challenge that we had to face. Mm. I can talk a bit about how we were able to, to get around, around those challenges, I guess. <laughs> Next. So initially, um, once we created a few characters, a few uh, models for the game, we went around shopping it, basically shopping it to get people interested to come and work with us. So initially, we even had to outsource some part of the modeling to companies, uh, some in Kenya, some in South Africa, and get like this good sets of uh, characters and models and visuals so we can actually shop around and show. Uh, and, and I personally toured across many universities in Ethiopia. And I was able to attract some talents, uh, some people who were uh, some in software engineering, some like in completely different fields. Uh, it could be mechanical engineering, it could be economics. And these people were interested in, in creating art and creating games. And they approached our company and they, we start to actually take in interns, take in employees. And that's how we slowly were able to grow uh, the talent uh, in, in our company. But the, the interesting result uh, that we, we got, because we kind of like stuck and, and we persevered for the past five years, uh, despite many financial problems that, that we actually had. And that resulted in this um, new kind of like motivation for, for kids who are in universities. Now, when I do tours, I hear a lot of people say, I want to actually graduate and, and be a game developer. Mm -hmm. uh, some even say I want to work in Kenny Games, which really like surprises <laughs> me. It's amazing to hear that. I mean, that's I'm one of the most amazing things to hear. Even <laughs> outside of Ethiopia, Kenny Games yeah. is synonym, and I'm telling you, Kenny Games is synonym for yeah. Jews that have uh, done well for itself, regardless of how yeah. continental yeah. uh, game development yeah. going. Kenny Games is respected. If you know, that is, that is bit, really <laughs> if you know a little bit of uh, the uh, the yeah. for people that know a little bit about the African game development, uh, well, that is very flattering. <laughs> that's why so, I did start. That's why yeah, I see yeah. you are profitable yeah. for me. Like <laughs> you're such a great great company. It's like yeah, I heard about that 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 they are profitable. You yeah. see what I mean? I didn't really I see what you to. Uh, the whole thing. So, yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's interesting to, to know because um, regardless of the challenges that we go through, we really strive to build games that that we feel are going to to really exceed expectations. And that's the one good thing that I think we've been able to do so far. We've built games that, that we're really proud of. Mm -hmm. and, and that is kind of the mentality we've tried to instill into the company and to the, the, the game developers that we have. It's not whenever we make games, we don't want to make it good enough for the country or good enough for the continent. We want it to be the best game there is, period. That is that is the single thing that's been consistent in our like ideology and mentality from, from when we began five years ago. And the good thing is, it's actually possible to do that. And, and making games has become easier and easier by the year. Mm -hmm. Companies like you know Unity, all the engines out there, all the third third party applications, mm -hmm. uh, every every technology that is available each year makes it easier to make beautiful games, mm -hmm. which which is a good thing for companies like us, for companies in in Africa. It is one of the most uh, biggest opportunities we have because we can build games that are as good as any out there. Mm -hmm. and, and that is something that we have to, to kind of like focus on because one, one thing that I see, so there, there have been games launched before us in Ethiopia. I've seen a game or two launched and, and you immediately know that this was made in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing that we actually used to, to take as a measuring factor for how good the game was. We, so I personally take a game, so we had much, you know, earlier drafts of our like, first game and we would take it to one of like, you know, a lot of kids mm -hmm. and they'd play around with it and they say, yeah, but this looks like it was made in Ethiopia. And that was like such a good, good uh, metric because we don't want them to say that. We want them to, to think things that are made in Ethiopia are great. But the way for you to make them think that is by building something great and telling them from Ethiopia, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From Ethiopia. So, mm -hmm. so we really iterated a lot Mm -hmm. on our games, especially mm -hmm. on first drafts, 
to get it to a point where these kids would say, wow, this does not look like it was made here. Yeah. And that was when we said, okay, great. This is, this is good. It means it's actually starting to get better. So yeah. we used that as kind of like a, a, a way to tell how good the games were. And when we actually built it and finally launched it, and I went on tours to, you know, like where people would actually ask me if, if so I, I went to a place, I won't mention the country, <laughs> but I went to a place and uh, the, the I couldn't get past the airport because the people there could not believe that this was made in Africa. And then I actually sat there, <laughs> I sat in the airport for like half an hour explaining how I was the CEO of this gaming company that, was, that built this game. And it took me so many minutes to explain this. <laughs> so off we is... thought you're going to tell me the country. And I, I would like I got some ideas, <laughs> but I would like love to be confirmed. But yeah, continue. <laughs> so so that happened, and I'm I'm kind of like sad that happened, but I'm also happy because now that's something that tells you that whatever whatever we built exceeded sure. expectations. Patients, right? Exactly. And that is something that we've been able to continue in, in like later games that we built. Was mm -hmm. uh, the latest game that we built, Kabeta. Uh, we really, we really work hard to make people say this was definitely not made in Africa. Mm -hmm. Then we can go ahead and say it was, and, mm -hmm. and then later on say Africa can actually build amazing things. Exactly. Like this. Exactly. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. That's 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 the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So so what would be for you? Uh, what what it is for you in the next five years? What what's important for Kenya Games to succeed and to represent the uh, uh, continental African games development uh, industry, a community? Okay, so <clears throat> recently we've had uh, a really good. So 2021 was a really good year. We're going to make our pre-seed money. Uh, we, we were able to actually scale our company. We are able, so we are uh, at a really good position right now to go ahead and, and scale up our company to a point where it's not only profitable in Ethiopia, but the gaming, it can prove the gaming industry is a really uh, profitable industry in Africa. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're going to do is, uh, of course, we build games. That's what we do. And we're going to continue to build games and we're going to continue to try to exceed expectations mm -hmm. on the quality and, and on the, you know, even the gameplay of the game so that we can actually have a lot of players. But the second thing that we want to prove is that gaming, uh, so the, the way that we, games have been monetized in Ethiopia, uh, we've been able to prove uh, this African friendly payment methods really work. Um, so far we've had, even on like a limited trial uh, runs of, of Kukulu, we've, we've had more than 20,000 paying users who paid through this uh, convoluted ways to, 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 to even like, it's even just hard for me to describe over this video because uh, it's one of those convoluted ways people used to pay. So we've been able to, to prove that Africans want to play games that are African and, and they have the purchasing power to actually create a sustainable business model out of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we want to be able to prove that, not only prove it, but actually create the sustainable gaming industry that would be able to attract a lot of a lot of uh, investors and a lot of talent into the, con into the content as well. And you see this, I mean, there are publishers like, uh, so I, I don't know if you've heard of Kerry first, yeah. uh, we've been able to, yeah, we've been able to raise more than I think 10 million so far. Mm -hmm solely for, for publishing games in, in the African market, right? Mm -hmm. And that should tell you how the market is actually starting to grow. And then you have this exponentially growing internet accessibility, uh, smartphone accessibility. Uh, and in Ethiopia alone, alone, there's like, I think now 20 million smartphones. Uh, and there's almost zero money being made in mobile gaming. And, and you look at some of the developed countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which have like uh, like 250, 300 million uh, dollars being made every year and in mobile gaming. And you actually see this potential where you have a huge growing in demand in content and this exponentially growing purchasing power in the continent as well, because the economy of, of uh, the country as a whole on average is mm -hmm. it's been growing, right? It's not been going down. So you have this amazing opportunity mm -hmm. for and. and Africa is the youngest continent, right? More than 60% of 
mm-hmm. of the population being under 20. So you have this amazing demand, an amazing market that has untapped, that is basically free uh, and, and waiting for you to come in and actually cater to it and actually make games available for it. Mm-hmm. And currently, the, most of the games that you have, um, I mean, first of all, they don't cater to the African market. Uh, if I'm African, I want to play an African game. An African game could be many things. It could be the style, the music, it could be the characters themselves. When you actually see yourself in that game, you relate better to it. I mean, case in point would be, like, think of what Black Panther did, right? Black Panther was a smashing success because for the first time, Africans were able to get an African hero, right? Not even not even a black hero, but an African one, which is, which is the first time. And it shows you how that is in such huge demand because mm-hmm. everyone went out and, and saw it because yeah. they were they were thirsty of that kind of content. So mm-hmm. our goal is to create those types of contents. And mm-hmm. currently I can confidently say that there aren't many such types of contents that cater to the African market, that try to actually create you know games that Africans would love to play. And that mm-hmm. is something that needs experimentation because each African country and even each uh, tribe and each section in each mm-hmm. African country would, would has a different identity, has a different mm-hmm. uh, thing that they would love, things that they would admire, mm-hmm. and things that they would be attracted to. So that requires its own experimentation and its own set of you know trials and errors to come up with the types of games that, that people mm-hmm. want. But mm-hmm. it is a huge market, and we want to be able to be one of the first to, to kind of like prove this market exists, mm-hmm. prove profitability of the market and allow because once you actually prove it it means you would allow other game developers from the same market to come in and and create many of you know like those types of games that you've created one of the things that we wanted for example is grow the gaming talent in Ethiopia. it would be very nice if we can i don't want to be the only gaming com- company in ethiopia it would be nice if there are many more mm-hmm. and at that point we would also want to be able to to share platforms Mm -hmm. Uh, because we have a lot of proprietary software that we've been able to build over five years that allow us to build games faster and allow games to and and allow us to sell games in Mm -hmm. in the country for example our country we want to make those things available for for this game developer so they too can Mm -hmm. go ahead and actually start creating successful games and successful Mm -hmm. uh, entertainment applications for for the cater for the african market so Mm -hmm. this is generally what we're planning to to go uh, forward with in the next, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say five years, one to two years, I can't say. <laughs> yes. five, five years later, maybe we're the, the EA of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I'm su- I, I support you in the in those goals. You know my, you Definitely. know that well. So I, I support Definitely. you. Definitely. Yes. Uh, it, is, it is in my plans to come. And as I was telling you earlier, I wanted to come for Africa Tech Summit and it has been cancelled and postponed to February. Uh, so I'm thinking, because my plans was to come mid, mid-September, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Rwanda, and then go to West Africa and Cameroon as well. Um, so now everything has been a little bit, and as well, I heard that, well, they're closing some countries now, you know, I'm, I'm, I live in the in Brighton in the UK, so they're closing some countries where we can't go uh, without count, uh, count, um, being in count time after, uh, when we come back. So we'll see, uh, but it's still my, my uh, within, the, within the next year, I'm going to be in Ethiopia, definitely. That would be great. Yeah. We would love to host you. <laughs> I would, I would love to come. Yeah, <laughs> to, to really uh, understand. So I've yeah. been to Ethiopia, but I didn't stay long. I stayed ten hours, twelve hours. You know. Oh, that's yeah. That I see. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to be there yeah. at least at least nice. four five days to to ensure Experience that. Experience the whole thing. Yeah. to go. As I told you, I like to go to see their ancestors. <laughs> so yes, I like to go to to very cultural and uh, yeah, fight. Yeah. 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 Well, you would you would not like be able to cover the whole thing in five days. Maybe I know, like, but, <laughs> but go to some places but that nobody. Definitely, knows. it would be a good start. <laughs> yeah, you see what I mean. No, go to some places that only the, the the people from from here knows, but they are symbolic. Yeah. You know what That's, I mean? So, you'll, yeah. you'll definitely love it here. You should oh. definitely make it your first destination in Africa. 
Yeah, sure. Not a problem, not a problem. So, um, last, last uh, do you have any word of advice for uh, anyone that wants to come in the game industry? Any, uh, anybody from uh, hey, um, Ethiopia or or Kenya, the East, Af- East Africa, or the whole of Africa who wants to get into the game industry? Me. So, one of the things that I would advise is that it is... I would love to encourage, I guess, many people to, to start looking at this as, as a really good um, business venture because it is soon going to explode and people are really going to regret not having been in, you know, from the get-go. And that is something that they should definitely think about. Um, and while going in, it would be good to, to kind of like start. So one thing that I would change is I would start small. Um, start from early experiments, early prototypes, make as many prototypes as you can and tr- test them on, on people. You know, don't, don't spend a year trying to create the perfect game. Uh, there are like, so artists and business people are different. Like the difference between an artist and a business person is that artists create something that they love and business people create something that others love, right? Mm-hmm. And what you want to be is a combination of this two. If you are solely an artist and you make something beautiful, amazing, you love it, but no one else does, then that's going to be a waste of your time when it comes to the business side. And you're not going to have a profitable business from it. Mm-hmm. And, and if you f- solely focus on the business, this is, an arts, this is an arts business. You have to make something that's good, something beautiful, something that you're proud of. So many people who want to get into the gaming industry are usually uh, good artists, I would say. And, or, or want to be. So they it's not not being an artist that they like, it's the business side. But I would like to really urge them to focus on the business as well. Try to create something beautiful but small and test it on people. Try to create uh, even like, you can create prototypes, right? Uh, you can even create prototypes with blocks, like not nothing visual and then test the gameplay, the core gameplay with people. And then that experimentation would kind of help you understand what type of a game to make and how how the gameplay would actually be able to, to do very well in that market. And that, doing that would really help you get there much faster than spending a lot of resources, a lot of energy, a lot right. of time right. before you actually go ahead and, and do that. Sure. So I would encourage them to do that. Mm. And Another thing is, it would be very, it's going to be very important to collaborate. This is a huge industry and you're not going to make it alone. That is the biggest lesson I've learned. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a publisher, go ahead and try to contact the publisher, try to get a game published. Uh, even within your team, try to get as many people interested in different things uh, to join and, and create the game. Because one, a solo person or like one, two people trying to create a game is not going to get very far. And there's that uh, that, that African saying: um, If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Right? Mm-hmm. This is one of those businesses that's going to take time to to be successful. So, mm-hmm. I would say try to find people uh, mm-hmm. that you can work with. If you're a business person, try to find a software engineer. Try to find an artist. Try to find a music person, a storyteller. Bring as many people as you can to join the team to create that that good experience. Um, so yeah. And, and network. Businesses grow at the speed of relationships, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. And and it's good to try to actually meet as many people as you can, uh, regardless of why, right? And, and exactly. try to, exactly. yeah, try to actually... That's why I want be, to come. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so network as much as you can. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and together we can get the gaming industry off, right? Off to the moon, I guess. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. It's, that's going to be, if we understand our uh, specialty and our expertise and how we can all uh, get together to grow the gaming industry uh, better and stronger with a sustainable approach, uh, I'm sure that um, we will be able to, to develop, to have a a growth hack, hack. yeah? In that is true, that is true. So the provision of people that we can look at from outside would be our opinion. Getting together, I think we've got 
uh, in the whole of uh, Africa. We've got enough uh, manpower and brain power to put it together, you know, and even in exactly. in, in business. Exactly. In business yeah. as well. So that is one of my focus as well as in, you know, to support in, uh, the, the game in the, the African gaming industry among of a uh, game industry, but one of my focus is the African gaming industry. And leveraging that with, with the, the, the revenue generating for, for companies that want to save money, get revenue, but as well, improve their brand, improve their brand image in, with, uh, in supporting diverse and uh, diverse content creators, diverse content, definitely. Definitely. So, so I'm sure wow. in putting ourselves together, and as we were saying, the studio needs to understand the business yeah. side as well. That is true. So that is true. We are here as well to support them on the business that side. That is true. That is true. Yeah. That's really amazing that, that, that we have you as well. <laughs> it's a good thing. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, David, for your time. I'm like, I'm like looking at the time, I'm like, we were not supposed to do it. And I was, but it was so interesting. I really uh, loved having you in uh, your very different um, approach, uh, which aligned completely with mine. And and I understand you completely. <laughs> uh, uh, so, so, yes, I was refreshing, definitely. And I, I can't wait to see what you're going to come up with. And uh, let's keep in touch to to update each other about what what's been what's been done. And I'm going to uh, to um, update you on when I will be in Addis. Definitely, well, I'm really really happy that you had me. It was a very interesting conversation. Uh, I'd yeah. love to do this again, maybe next time in person when you're here. Sure, yeah, sure. That would be great, yeah. actually. Yes. That is one of my goals, yeah. actually, to do to do my interview, like in a, in a studio, like like in in face to face. That would be great. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much, viewers. Thank you. If you got to that point. You are very interested in that, what's happening in <laughs> Africa. So please give that a subscribe button, like, share, comment uh, to improve the algorithms and, you know, to provide us more information on what's happening in the African games industry. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, this is oh, yeah. Johanna, a.k.a. Jojo. 